everyone. It's Maria Burke here with another 3 to 1 Focus Together interview. And my guest today is Stephen McDermott. Stephen, you're really welcome. It's lovely to have you here. Would you like to introduce yourself to us, please? Maria B, how are you doing? Good morning. Oh, greetings from, uh, from Navan in County Meath, Ireland. How are you today? <laughs> I'm great, I'm great. And of course, you're over near the Hill of Tara, and I'm right here very close to the Hill of Ishtanok. So the, the, the male centre of Ireland and the female centre of Ireland are kind of united on this Zoom call Absolutely. today. We, yeah. should, we should light some fires again like they used to do in the old days. <laughs> yeah, well, I believe actually, speaking of that, I think that, that the clerks are going to be lighting their own fire and they're going to share it on Zoom because obviously we can't, because of social distancing, we can't all be together. But that will actually be happening in the next couple of days because, you know, we're right in the time of Yeltsin at the moment. So, Absolutely. yeah. Yeah. Powerful yeah. times. Powerful times. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually have never spoken to you before until right now, but I have been in your reception area. Um, you were sussing me out. I knew I, that. Yeah, <laughs> I was. And I was reading Positive Life magazines in there. And I was setting goals for myself in there. And some of them come true, but I can't share that yet. So, but would right. you like to tell us about your work and your spiritual journey and where you're at at the moment? Sure. Um, spiritual stuff. Well, well, I give you my morning, my morning routine. Yes, that's a great, especially at the yeah. moment. I think people need to know these things. Yeah, please do. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, at the moment, I'm I'm sporting. Some people mightn't recognise me. I'm sporting my uh, my lockdown look, which is this beard. And uh, my mother isn't very impressed, and she won't be when she sees this that I didn't shave. But uh, until I get out, I'm keeping this. So there you go. But um, yeah, I mean, spiritual practices. I've been quite spiritual or realizing i was quite spiritual most of my life i started uh, discovered reiki about 11 years ago when i was living in uh, in london but uh, my morning routine i mean i love to start with a uh, with a um, i mean i wake up and i thank the lord for being alive and uh, i have a little little two-way conversation there and um, some people think i'm mad when when i tell them that i hear stuff back and you know, the answer to that is, you know, you go to mass and you pray, but when he talks back to you, you're psychotic. So, you know, I, I don't understand that at all. But uh, um, following that, I do, a, I do a lovely 20 minute meditation and a sort of a clearing and a grounding. And then I love to, uh, I like to do some yoga, some stretching, get out and do some stretching. And I've, I have a lovely habit now of having a nice pint of water beside my bed with, uh, with some lemon which is great for clearing the kidneys every morning. It's a great detox. So, and then following that, I've set up the room, the back room. I have a, uh, I have a gym in the back room. So a couple of weights there and I do the bike for about half an hour. So following that, you know, just, just very energized and, and ready for the day. But uh, spirituality for me is, is, uh, is connecting with nature. I mean, we're so lucky around here, as you know, we've the Boyne, we have the Hill of Tara, with Dalgan Park, you know, so if you want to get away with it, connect. And as you know, nature is so healing. And um, I like to finish off the day with a nice, a nice meditation and a nice clearing on myself as well. So um, that's my sort of my go to spiritual practices each day. Yeah. OK, right. And so how long have you been meditating and what kind of meditation is it that you do? Oh, I. Uh, I. I've done many retreats. I've done so many retreats and lots of work and clearing on myself. And I suppose that's where the spiritual aspect came from. But um, uh, there's a lovely uh, retreat that happens once a year over in Drogheda and it's called Vipassana meditation. So uh, it's quite intense. It's not for everybody. You know, you, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, 12 days. Um, this particular retreat is 12 days. You don't, you're not supposed to talk. You don't look anybody, there's no eye contact, it's vegan food, and it's 10 hours a day meditating. And what that does is it cuts out all the, the traffic and the communication that we have in our life, and it really brings you insight. And all you're left with is you and your thoughts. And uh, <laughs> that can be a, scare, a scary place to be. So what you do is when you're sitting in that, um, uh, you, you don't move, and you're sitting in that meditation, and actually pain starts to come up in your body in different places. But you sit with that pain. And in that pain is your emotions and your feelings and stuff that's come up that has happened in the past. And when you sit with it, 
it actually starts to dissipate and disappear. So you're, you're clearing stuff. So from that meditation, I suppose, I brought that into my daily life of just sitting and literally doing a body scan um, and sitting with sort of pain and un discomfort in my body. Because what we do is when we have discomfort, uh, we start, we avoid, whether it's avoiding people, situations, um, eating right, you know, uh, our habits started to change. So from, from doing that meditation, it sort of transcends into the rest of my life of, uh, of being aware of when I'm going to avoid things and um, I'm not doing that, you know. So, um, yeah, stuff, stuff like that. Okay, right. And so how long is it this Vinasana? Like how do you... That, that, that type of meditation is called Vipassana. Um, but, I mean, there's just... What I advise people to do who come in to me is, is bring, be, be, bring it simply, you know, and any, any of the starting out on their spiritual journey, the first thing I recommend is to be, to start to be aware of your thoughts. And um, if you, it's quite intense. If you can do that every day, every minute of every day, when you become aware of your thought, uh, you kind of, your behaviors fall into line then. So you realize, right, that thought has come in, you know, 80,000 thoughts, we jump on some of them all day and ruminate, you know, whether it's maybe we were bullied 20 years ago or uh, we had an argument with someone or someone cut us off in traffic or beat the horn at us. And we sort of sit in those thoughts and that anger. But if you realize and you're quite aware when that comes in, uh, we, you can cut off the anxiety that comes up quite quickly there. So um, breathing really brings you back to that, that breath, that anchor that we have, that constant. So what I encourage people to do in the morning, just for 10 or 15 minutes, is lay your hands on your tummy and just breathe, yeah? And I ask people to breathe in for six seconds, hold for three, breathe out slowly for six seconds, hold for three. And in that space of those three seconds is where the peace is. So the more you practice that, the more when all these horrible situations come into life, you're quite aware of it and you can bring that piece into your life so it's just some simple techniques it's not it's not rocket science if you keep it simple for yourself um it can be life-changing yeah yeah and i so agree with you it is like a lot of these things are simple but it really is about integrating them into our lives and it's all very well knowing them um but as i'm always saying reading the recipe book doesn't bake the cake um so when you say when people come into you, do you want to tell us a bit more about your actual work? Because I know that's kind of a, a, a first connection point for a lot of people on their spiritual journey when they come, sure, come across sure, you. Sure. Yeah. Were, 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 were you not listening at the door when you're in the waiting room spying on me that time, no? <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was reading the magazine. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Well, just a little bit, a little bit of a backstory, I suppose. Um, you know, I came out of college. Um, not knowing what I wanted to do really because of career guidance at the time and I don't know if it's changed was was absolutely terrible you know and you're being asked at 16 years of age what what do you want to do for the rest of your life and I suppose I was lucky in that I had uh, I had some life experience I'd done a lot of work on farms and I'd I'd, I'd done lots of summer work and uh, I had a good work ethic I suppose I was quite entrepreneurial and always had been. And my mother tells me stories of when I was, you know, six or seven, and I'd go to school uh, with a, you know, she'd give you, you know, in your pencil case, you'd have a rubber, a pair, and a pencil, and I'd come back with ten rubbers and twenty pencils. So I, what I was doing, I was bartering with people all day. So I had that sort of innate entrepreneurial spirit in me and sales spirit, and it's so disappointing because that's not, uh, uh, it's not. There's no courses for that at the moment, you know, and. I mean, the country is run by small businesses, so it's something I really, I really wish that the government would look at and the education system would look at. But um, following, following that, I moved into, uh, I fell into working in sales roles. I was, was Canada Life, pensions, investments, and I sold the dream. I sold foreign property, Crete, Spain, Cyprus, Turkey, and uh, I even worked for Cadbury's for a while, you know, and <laughs> which was a nice job. It wasn't too nice on the waistline. But um, I moved into then, I always wanted to own my own business. And uh, so I set up a cleaning company, it's quite simple, set up a cleaning company. And from that, you know, we were turning eight to 10 grand a month. Absolutely crazy. And uh, of course, then the recession hit. 
And um, I was living at home at the time and I said to mum, listen, I'm not leaving off this couch until I figure out what I want to do. <laughs> she said, fine, you can keep paying rent though. And I said, okay. <laughs> so three or four months of that and I sort of created a, uh, I suppose, a routine for myself, stayed away from social media and stuff and kept reading and feeding my brain. And I literally had a eureka moment where uh, I, I figured out osteopathy and that was it. And I said, why? And I wanted to help people. I was very interested in how the body worked. There was a need for it in Navan, and it was fantastic. I got to get out of Ireland. You couldn't train in Ireland. So I went to London and trained for five years, set up my own um, little sports massage business at the same time. So I was putting into practice what I'd done during the day into what I was learning at night, what, what I was learning during the day. And I think, of course, I would love to see colleges doing the same thing here. So came back. And in 2014, I set up um, my uh, practice in Navan, and I, it's called BePainFree.ie. I'm literally so busy from day one, Maria, you know, and um, haven't looked back since, I suppose. And now we have the lockdown because of the, the virus. But there's 150 osteopaths in Ireland, and uh, we all, everyone is different. And for me, um, you're everyone brings something different to the table, you know, I suppose because I had done some work, so much work on myself over the last 10 or 15 years through counseling and retreats and constantly sort of evaluating myself and wanting to be better. My, my spiritual side developed, but also my mental and emotional side really developed. So, so when someone comes into me and they have back pain, a lot of therapists will just focus on that point and try and heal the muscle or, the, or the, the, the joint. And for me, there's so much more to it. You know, you have to look at the person's emotional health, um, their diet, their exercise, um, and also what's happening outside in their environment, their relationships. Um, a lot of people, and I suppose because I've done that, I started to attract people who had anxiety and depression and stuff like that. And for me, when you work on the body, and I would, I would tell people that the work I do, it's not a quick fix. You know, it's going to take some time to bring all those elements together. And most people buy into that. But when you open up the body, be it the muscle or the joints, and because osteopathy is so deep and it's healing, it brings up a lot of emotional stuff for people. And you have to be able to, as a good therapist, to hold space, but also to be able to guide those people into the right place. So... Uh, my sister has come on board now and she's a psychologist and a CBD therapist and she's in the clinic as well. So we have a fantastic um, package, I suppose, for people now at the moment to, uh, to go into for, for, for relieving pain. But um, you talk about the spiritual end of things. And for the last couple of years, I've been sort of researching and getting my own treatment in distant healing and energy healing. And for me, this is the way forward. I really believe that. And I think it's the, the deepest form of healing you can get. So we we'll say you come in, Marie, and you had back pain. For me, that's the last point where the pain can arrive in or the problem. OK, and you have disease or dis-ease in the body. So if we track back outside of the body, you have this energy field or a couple of energy fields. And if you're trained enough, you can sense these. And in these energy fields uh, are emotional issues and trauma from the past. And if these issues aren't resolved, well, then they start to come down into the body to be resolved. Okay, the body is saying, I need this looked at. So with energy healing, and I like to be efficient with my work, we go out into these energy fields and look at the issue and take it out of there. And that's where I think the healing should go to now. And it's funny that this virus happened at this time. And I, it's, it's maybe wrong of me to say, but it happened for the very right time for me because that was the way I was thinking, but I just needed that push, you know. And, um, and it's, again, with people, now they need to be brave. The people need to be brave, not to be afraid anymore and to get on stage and say, look, at this is, this is what I want to do and to hell with everybody else, you know, and go for it. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. Yeah. Fabulous. Fabulous. And I just love your explanation um, of all the different energy fields. And I, of mm -hmm. course, completely uh, agree with you because I'm 
you know, I've done my Louise Hay teacher training. I went to Australia three times to do it. And I'm big into, you know, I would honestly believe that every physical ailment, ailment has some sort of an emotional uh, root cause. And if we can get back and clear that root cause, then literally the whole thing shifts. And I've seen that happen to myself many times, you know, going to people and doing some journaling and stuff, but also with people that are around me. And like, it is amazing the power that we have once we start to use it right. And once we start to take responsibility for ourselves. Take you know? responsibility, absolutely. And I mean, when I, when I would work on some people, some people would absolutely burst out laughing. They would say, if I'm working on the neck and I open up the neck, but also some people would, would start crying, you know, and, and um, as you say, it's, it's stored healing. But a lot of people don't, um, I mean, energy healing, distant healing, it's been around for thousands of years, but a lot of the people are, well, a few people, I suppose, half and half have, are skeptical about it, you know, and they don't know what it is. And until I, until I uh, explain what it is, well, then they, they sort of understand it then and they come in, you know, and um, for me, energy healing, it's, it's nearly beyond our scope to, to explain because we don't have the, the language to explain what's going on. It's more, a lot of it is trust. But for me, where we are, uh, where everything is energy, is vibration, as you know, and uh, all our atoms are, are vibrating at a certain level. So our body is energy, is vibration, but it's a very low vibration. So hence, we're able to feel our body and see it. Thoughts are another vibration. So you know yourself. You've often heard that. You've often said to someone, "I was thinking, I was thinking the same thing." So, in the space and time that we are, that thought has travelled through the space, through space to you, and you've you've picked it up. Same with emotion. You know, you're talking to someone, you can feel they're maybe they're annoyed or they're angry. Through space and vibration, that energy is picked up by you. And the same thing happens if you're on the phone. It's vibration. Yeah. Now, a hundred years ago, we're never they would have thought you were crazy that we're going to talk into something and the other end of the world people would hear you but it's the normal now and this but it's the same sort of concept with energy healing or distant healing so somebody can be in front of me or the other side of the world i've treated my sister who lives in australia and has got fantastic results i send the energy or channel the energy through me powerful energy and through intention i'm able to sense what's happening in your body and through intention, I send this energy through that field, which is picked up by you. Now, the energy itself has its own consciousness and its own intelligence, and it knows what to do. So I don't, I'm not involved. I'm not a healer. I would say I'm just a, a channel for this healing. So um, it works on all levels, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. And um, yeah, as I said, I think it's, it is, it is the way forward. It is the future of healing, I believe. Yeah, and I think it's it's very interesting um, when you say it's around for thousands of years. I think this is a lot, well, especially in the West, it's what all of these things like our herbs and our energy healing and our rituals, these are all the things that Western civilization has lost, unfortunately. And they're the things that our ancestors knew. And I'm sure as well, I know in our family there's an awful lot of ability for telepathy you know that's always been there and i honestly believe that you know as time goes on we're going to get to that stage where our telepathy improves as well I, you know I, I believe that we're going to sort of go back and start you know reconnecting with well with more of our divinity you know and more of who we sure. really are you know so uh -huh. it's lovely uh -huh. to hear you saying this and if you don't mind me saying so, it's lovely to hear a man saying this, because I think a lot of the time, you know, um, a, a lot of the women might be talking about things like this, but it's wonderful to hear a man saying this, because I think the men need to realize that it's okay to listen to this, and it's okay to believe in it, you know? Um, no, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, you're right, and um, it, I mean, it took, as I said to you, it took 15 years to be able to sit in front of you and uh, are we on TV to be brave enough to be on TV? <laughs> but it, you know, it, it's took a long time to get to here, to be able to sit or stand here and say, talk about, you know, angel and divine energy and healing. And that comes from doing the work on yourself, you know, and I've been part of men's groups and there is men's groups. And 
There has been one or two in Ireland that have been quite slow to get going, but again, it's something I'd love to I'd love to organise is to really encourage men to to come back to themselves and that they have the we have the power inside, you know, and to to learn about our masculinity and the right way to go about about just living life, you know. And um, yeah, there's 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 lots of work. There's lots of work there. I mean, women are really coming together and, are, and they're, they're uninhibited about talking about it. And I think we're still sort of standing down the back of the church, you know. We, <laughs> we, need, to, we, need, to have, we, we need to have the confidence to go right up to the front seat and sit down and, um, and say, listen, I, I need help. Help me, you know. So, um, yeah, lots of work to be done there. But yeah, I'm, 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 I'm confident that it's not for everyone, but, you know, if every, anyone, everyone can, you know, encourage each other and bring one person along, it's enough, you know. Yeah, and I think it's, um, I think women are more inclined to talk about stuff, mm -hmm. and but it is very hard that first piece because I know as well. I know from looking at my astrological chart, and that's a whole other conversation. I know mm -hmm. from when it was done the first time. Apparently, I am the nearest thing to alpha male in a straight female that you can get. So I have this very male thing in me as well. And I know when the recession hit, like I could not ask for help because I've always been the doer. And I think a lot of guys feel like that as well. It's not okay to ask for help. Like the guys are supposed to be the ones that have solutions and they're supposed to be the fixers. And, you know, and like that's, that's a very hard thing for men to carry, I think. And also this piece, you know, where you know, young boys have been brought up not to cry and things. And I think they're all things that we need to unlearn because all that emotion is stuck somewhere and look look at how many men die of heart attacks and I'm sure it's not no coincidence when men are told to stuff their emotions and their feelings down and to just get on with it you know so absolutely absolutely yeah um look at there's no road map as my mum has said to me and I'm saying myself there's no road map of how to be a parent you know um but I really think there is so much help out there online and there's professionals and even if you sat down once a month or every six months with a professional and got their advice of how do we deal with this how do i deal with myself you know um you know we uh, in ireland people still aren't talking to to counselors and getting advice on life you know and uh, i was reading a, a, a woody allen uh, uh, quote the other day and he said uh, yeah, I've been seeing my shrink for 20 years. I think we're getting somewhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, I think it's, things are changing now. The energy is changing and there's a new energy coming in now. And it's really going to sweep people along for the next, until the end of the year. Yeah. So people need to, you know, a lot of guys are wasting their time, I feel. You know, they're, I see fellas out washing cars twice a day and they're not getting up early and they're, they're watching TV all day. You know, come on get out there get up there's an opportunity to wipe the slate clean i mean who wants to go back to the old you know there's people talking about oh i can't wait to get back to how things were why do you want to go back to the old there's such an opportunity now to really dream and set your intention of what you want to do what i'm what i'm doing is uh you know i'm getting up every morning and i'm uh, i'm writing down what i want to achieve every day you know i'm ticking things off and if you do that it gives you a sense of achievement but it also allows creativity to flow and ideas to flow in and from there you can you can manifest whatever you want you know but it really is the time now to to, to step up and as i said be brave and i think a lot of stuff is is going to move online and that's the change i can see coming in definitely a lot of things are moving online um and you know it's it's there's going to be a lot of fear over the next 18 months to two years. There's going to be a lot of fear out there. Um, but I'm, I'm, people shouldn't buy into that, you know, especially in the news. There's a lot of, uh, I think it's the old shadow part that's finally left. So I would encourage people not to stay away from the news. We don't need to know how many people are dying every day. Uh, look at it once a week, you know. Avoid people who are negative, you know. Um, these, these are really bringing us down. And I would encourage people to, uh, well, look, at this is going to create a lot of anxiety and depression, I think. I mean, people have an intolerance to uncertainty. 
and these are uncertain times. But one thing you can do is uh, a practice of deep gratitude. So the opposite of fear is love. And if you practice uh, deep gratitude, and a lot of people might not know what that is. It's very simple. It's being grateful for things in your life. And that's part of my morning routine, which I think I was going to tell you about. But uh, that's gone. Now it's the afternoon. <laughs> but anyway, what, what's deep gratitude? So it's being grateful for things in your life. And it doesn't have to be the big things, you know, like family or your house or your work. It can be your slippers. It can be your bed. It can be food, nature, the sun. And when you do things like that, you're actually changing pathways in your body and in your mind. And this is the strongest vibration there is, is love. So the more you do this practice of gratitude, do it daily and really feel it. Just don't go through a list like you're reading it out. Feel all those things in your body, drop down into your heart. And when that happens, new opportunities start to come in because you're now on a different vibration. New opportunities come into your life and you're, you, know, you can literally change your life by doing that practice. So it's simple, but very appropriate for the time we're in. Yeah. And, and it's also very profound because the way mm. I look at it is, according to whatever you're feeling, you're a, mag a magnet for more of that. So therefore, sure. I know myself, I do my gratitude. I actually write, I write at least 10 things every day that I'm grateful for, yeah. usually yeah. just before I go to sleep. Um, because it's easy to think of the two or three, but when you go to 10, you know, you have to dig deep and uh, yeah, it really, really, really works. Right, so you have a few tips you said you wanted to share about travel. Oh, did I? <laughs> you want to share your tips about travel for people, about doing courses and things. I thought that was interesting. Uh, okay. Um, well, what, what can I say? I mean, I've done so much travel. Um, I don't know where to start. Um, I mean, I'm, when I was 18 or 19, um, I wasn't happy with, with doing the... the the lads holiday you know the drinking for a week and I'm sure it was great crack and all that but I was never a big drinker I was really a lightweight so I pictured myself dying <laughs> for five days of a holiday so it just didn't make any sense to me you know and of course no one wanted to do the long haul travels when you're 18 and 19 it was Spain and that sort of thing so um, you know I, I went out to far from places like South America and deep Southeast Asia exploring you know but I'd done that with um in group tours so if i would really advise people if you're a solo traveler and you can't get anyone to go with you you know there's so many group tours out there and uh, intrepid travel was a fantastic one that i used to use but um about two years ago i went traveling and instead of you know lying on beaches and that sort of thing i started to do lots of courses so i linked up areas that i wanted to or courses that i want to do which would improve me and link that with a holiday as well. And there's so much stuff going on out there as well. You just have to look it up online. But um, volunteering is another thing, another way of traveling as well. Um, I was in Cambodia and uh, Nepal last October, November. And Cambodia is if it's in real need of help. Um, number one, it's the dumping ground for Asia for, for waste. So if you have any sort of a night in... Um, eco-friendly slant to yourself and um, there's a lot of help needed out there and the Chinese are down there and they're wiping out towns and cities and building casinos and it's it's not nice especially down in the south um, but I, I went up to I wanted to I felt a draw to to climb the Himalayas for my sins and <laughs> I, when I was out there the idea I went with was an open mind of, of wanting to set up a um, a charity of some sort so I felt I was working in Ireland and um, yes there was a money aspect but I really wanted to work from the heart and to help people so when I was there I went out with that with that intention and I met some people uh, who worked uh, and sold hemp products so I went and visit their factories and visit their families and so on and um, I'm setting up connections now to start bringing in hemp um, so that people can can make more environmentally friendly products here. So, um, yeah, I mean, travel, look at, it opens the mind, as I say, the old cliche, but um, I don't know when we're going to be able to start traveling again properly, but um, 
it's something that I'm linking into with my retreats, I think, which I was talking to you about before. That's another idea that's coming into me as well. So, yeah. So do you want to, that was my next thing. Do you want to expand uh -huh. that? This is kind of how we connected through our good mutual friend. Mm. Um, and she said, look what he's up to here. And I thought, oh, I want to talk to him. So <laughs> would you like to tell us what the idea is or how it, I know it's just evolving at the moment because I know myself, I have ideas about things and they kind of come in and then over the next days and weeks, like little bits add to them and you're kind of guided in different ways. So I know I it's, 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 it's in the melting pot at the moment. So do you want to yeah. share some or, or how far on it's come at this well, point? Well, I, I want to hear your idea as well. <laughs> I'll tell you about me in a minute. No, I, um, our mutual friend, I was, I was talking to her the other day. She was, um, I have a, a Facebook page and it's, it was to encourage people to, uh, just to give them some ideas of things to do, you know, and have have a have something to do every day, and, and it's called um, try one new thing per day for May, I think. And in there, people are, you know, they're trying new cooking, and I started. Uh, and this is why we we're talking to her. I was talking to her the other day. She wanted my recipe for nettle soup, which is a, a fantastic thing that people are not uh, they're not on at the moment. It's a superfood, you know. And from that, an idea came. We don't have nettle soup on our sh on our shelves, as far as I'm aware. But anyway, uh, so we're talking about this new idea that I have, and well, it's coming, it's coming to the fore now. But it's something I've been thinking of for for years and years, and um, it's running retreats. But what came to me during a meditation, and I was guided to do, was to run the retreat on a donation basis. So I'm not charging. So what I hope to do is uh, set up these retreats in different locations, energy centers around the world, the likes of Hawaii and maybe Egypt, these sort of places, offering my services for free and also encourage other therapists who are like-minded and have a high vibration to come in and help and offer their services. So, you know, singers, cooks, hands-on therapists, energy therapists, uh, counselors, you name it. We might need a singer, Maria, as well. So you could, <laughs> I heard you can sing a song or two, but uh, you know, I think I meant, yeah. So bringing all, bringing all this together and the center point will be the channeling and the energy healing that I do as well. So that'll be the center point. And also when we finish up, I'd love to set up some sort of volunteer um, activity in the area as well. And we can go out and volunteer and if people have donated to me, we can send that out to the, to the organizations in the area. And of course, my passion is hiking and that sort of thing. So bringing all that together, um, whenever the gates open again that we can travel, I hope to hit the ground running. So I'm sort of putting all that together at the moment, talking to retreat centers around the world, trying to get them on board that, you know, if we give, you're going to get back so much karma sort of in, in play. Um, not everybody's buying into it, of course, you know, they, they need to put the lights on like we all do. But I believe if you offer, offer yourself, and again, this is what's coming in, into the world now, and you can see it even in Ireland, so many people just offering their services for free. But you're going to get it back. It's going to come back in huge abundance, you know. So that's, I've been guided to do that, and I need to listen to it, so I am. Yeah, so uh, that's what the future holds for me. Uh, regarding osteopathy, I hope to keep the clinic open here in Navan. There is still a huge need. My phone is ringing. Unfortunately, I can't talk to people, but I will be in the country at different stages. And of course, the, the clinic will be covered by someone else. But I need to listen to, to my heart and to my head, I suppose, and, and take this new path, you know. Yeah, and I think that's a very important point is to listen to our intuition because it's really funny and you were saying you want to know about what I'm doing and I suppose like I'm a life coach and a personal empowerment facilitator and so, you know, I've been working with my Leo mentor and like we had a two-pronged approach like my in-person classes which obviously in the short term bring in more money and then this 3 two, one focus which is my online program that I developed that was a free challenge back in 2018. And I literally charged 33 euros for, for that's all I charge and it's 30 days. Um, and as people are coming back and going like, that's way too little, et cetera. But my heart all the time 
even with this two prong approach was going every time I went out my gate it was like there was a car with three two one in front of me or it was a Ford Focus yeah, and like true. no matter what I did I just couldn't get in behind pushing the in-person courses like do you know what I mean I just felt something innately in me and then lockdown happened and I'm going you should have trusted your intuition in the first place it's like when the when the planes went into the twin towers we didn't expect it so it's like our intuition already was getting us ready for lockdown way right. ahead if we were listening do you know so and True. like that as well I've also made it that that I've created a version of 3 one that's completely free um, right. and um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm at the end of 321 focus together uh, and like you I suppose so 321 is this little program you do on yourself and 321 happen every day three is your intention setting daily affirmation two is your guided meditation which is sending the love out to the world and the love coming back which is very simple for anybody starting meditation in the first place one is your gratitude and the focus every day changes so the focus the first day is the story of how you want your life to be and then we do a little different thing every day but the whole idea is you can do it all in 20 minutes and it doesn't have to be 20 minutes at once so that's the start of it and that was that's now kind of been it happened 10 times so there's a lot of good feedback people like amazing things have happened to people like you know they've left jobs they've left relationships um, in the middle of mine last May, I manifested a car. I'd, I'd ended up with no car, so somebody <laughs> gave me a gift of a car, right? So there's a lot of magic. That <laughs> there's a lot of magic when this is going on. And then like that as well, though, it was like the next layer was, um, yeah, a few weeks back, and I was reminded of the Greg ba Braden book, The Divine Matrix, and mm -hmm. that whole concept of the square root of one percent of the population affects everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, I've actually done the Toastmasters speech on it, and I and and I made it on PowerPoint, which is so unusual for Toastmasters. And right. so my whole Toastmasters speech, actually, I was very easily able to make it into a video. And basically, the magic number sitting here in front of me, it's like eight eight three two, is eight thousand eight hundred and thirty two people. If we connect together, is enough for the whole world for the quantum leap. Brilliant. Yeah. So no, I love it. Of, I love it. That's so. That's part of what I'm doing, and I'm looking also at do I create a group for this now and how am I going to do it and how to create things in such a simple way that it doesn't become too onerous on me uh, because I know a lot of it is my energy holding this together and the energy of people coming in. Do you know what I mean? So to keep it simple, like what you were saying, um, but again, starting again because 321 has been happening five times a year. So January, March, May, September, November. Um, so it's due again to start on 21st of May. Uh, and I'm going to do again the two versions. So the one version where you get your daily email for anybody who wants to sign up for that for three euros. And then I'm going to create a free version as well through a group, which is like what's running at the moment. So that anybody who wants to do that, that, that option is there as well. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I'm doing. Yeah. So I would, would you be interested in getting involved to see what it's like? Because do you know what I really need? Sign me up. Sign me up. Yeah, I'm going to <laughs> sign you up straight away. So because do you know what? I think, I mean, I've quite a few uh, women have done it and several people have done it multiple times and always, right. because you know yourself, you're always changing. So you always get the next layer. It's like doing your meditation. I haven't had that many guys do it and it would just be great to get more guys doing it to get the feedback out there. Do you know what I mean? Because I think, sure. you know, guys, guys do things because like, they think, oh, this is a guy thing. Unless you're a brave person like you, and I, I've interviewed a fair oh, few. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. No, but I've interviewed a fair few brave guys at this stage, right? But it just, more guys need to have the role models there, you know, for going forward. So, yeah. So it'd be great to have you on board. Yeah. I look forward to it. Look forward yeah. to it. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. So listen, is there anything else you want to share with us before we wrap up? Oh, are we finishing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've nothing to do today. Come on. <laughs> Uh, is there anything else I'd like to say? Uh, well, I love that. I think we've really found our sense of Irishness again. I really love that, you know. And uh, we lost it 20 years ago with that bloody Celtic tiger thing that happened, you know, and everyone got caught up in making money. But I really think people have realized that moneyness, money doesn't bring you happiness, you know. Everything is closed. We can't spend money. 
But if you look at people, everything has slowed down, you know? Everybody has slowed down and they've realized that less is actually more. And people are out walking, you know, they're walking dogs, everybody's exercising, they're cooking at home. We're bringing it back to family values. And I really love that. And that Irishness, that sense of community is coming back, you know? That thing of, you know, leaning across the gate and having a chat with your neighbor, which would have happened in the old days, but because we, you know, people don't even talk to their neighbors now. They don't know their names of their neighbors, especially in the towns. That's changing. And we're giving each other time, which we never done before. So that sense of Irishness is coming back. And, you know, I, I see it in, in the elderly people who would come in to me. They're, they're ha- they are the happiest cohort of people in the country. And I used to always ask them why, because, you know, I was working all day and I was really not, not happy. And they said, Stephen, we, uh, we keep things simple. You know, we don't we don't need much. And, you know, they're not bombarded with technology like we are. You know, we're, we need to know everything that's going on around the world. Why do we need that? We don't need that. You know, 20 involved in 20 bloody WhatsApp groups. Our phone is beeping and hopping all the time with notifications. They don't have that in their life. As, as one lady said to me, she said, Stephen, we didn't even know what was happening in Dublin. So, <laughs> so I love the way things are changing like that, you know. And I would hope when when people go back to work that they're not going to be doing that commute up to Dublin every day or wherever they're going, you know, five hours, four or five hours sitting in the car. People need to be brave now. Tell their employers, I'm working from home. We've tried it. It's tested. You can trust me. I work from home for two days a week, you know. You really need to, I, I can see a, a really great work-life balance happening now. And people are really, you know, they don't need to be spending money on themselves. You know, old runners that are under the stairs have suddenly got <laughs> a new lease of life. The jumpers are coming back out that we threw, you know, put in the back of the wardrobe years ago. We don't need to be spending money, 80, 100 euro every week in restaurants. Family values are coming back. Family cooking, which is so important, breaking the bread, you know, with each other. So uh, I, I, I'm very positive about the future. And I think things are really going to shift for people. Uh, it's not going to be an easy time over the next year. I think uh, that energy that I mentioned that's coming in, it's going to shake people up. It's really going to rattle people to come on, go and follow your soul, follow your passion. And people need to recognize that not as anxiety, but as a, as a push to, to go and find your dream and follow it. Be brave enough. So um yeah it's all good it's all gonna be good trust trust in the universe as they say yeah and learn to trust in yourself and get to know yourself i think they're the things that are coming in very strongly yeah Mm -hmm. so that is wonderful and yeah you know it reminds me what you're saying about the the older people when you're more mature i suppose when you start to work out what what doesn't doesn't matter it reminds me of stephen covey's book seven habits of highly effective people you know and how he talks about not uh not getting overly taken over by the things you've no control over the things outside you know your your circle of influence you know and i always remember like long ago i'm sure when people wrote from america back 100 years ago they didn't send all the drama back they sent the good stuff back not like when your kids ring you with the big panic and then everybody (laughs) send me money (laughs) i remember those phone calls yeah i think i was i was a month in australia and i was ringing back for 500 quid to to pay for uh to pay for rent but no you're right and um things that we are in control of now we have so much we have control of okay and i i I encourage people to to feed their brain they really need to keep feeding their brain whether it's through reading there's online uh, libraries, Scribd, S-C-R-I-B-D.com, eight euro a month, fantastic stuff in there. I'm doing an NLP and hypnosis course, online course, and that's through Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y.com. And I think that's 10 euro, and you get accredited with that. So there's lots we can be doing, you know. Um, I'm going to be uh, releasing some meditation, healing meditations. They're going to be on my Facebook page. So if people want to go in there around anxiety, uh, gratitude as well, um, stuff like that. So yeah, creative times. 
<laughs> yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And a great opportunity if we use it the right way. So I'm going to put your um, website link uh, below the video and also your Facebook link so that anybody, anybody who wants to connect with you is able to do so. So great. thank you so much. It was thank you. Chatting to you. Could be chatting to you all day. Um, thank you so much and best of luck with everything you're doing. And you know, uh, you can sign me up. I love doing my courses and stuff. I'm in for doing those international retreats this year. You're, you've got Fantastic. your first Okay. Name a country. Where do you want to go? Give me a country. Egypt is the first one coming into my head. I'm seeing the Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so I don't right. know if you're allowed in or not, but let's see. Anyway, <laughs> I, I, I don't mind. I'm open to whatever way it's meant to evolve because it's also something that's on my um, to do dream list as well. So, whatever way it comes. Right. But look, thank you so much. Wonderful to talk to you. Thank you, everybody. And I look forward to seeing you in another video again soon. Bye. Thanks. Bye.